Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and I've got some fantastic news about a news story that, honestly, you probably haven't heard about yet. Finally, after a very long and very well done investigation by police, fantastic work guys, they finally got him, he's behind bars. Rudy from Alpha Investments. Nah, no, I'm just kidding, it's not him. I mean, if anything, it would be Tolarian, but uh, no, this douchebag right here. So what did he do? Well, you guys know I'll take the opportunity to turn anything into a fun little interactive game. I mean, hey, I've seen a couple clips of uh, the Fashion Police, don't judge me, where they have Starlet or Streetwalker, and they show like a blurred out face uh, photo, and you gotta figure out if it's uh, paparazzi or like police investigation mugshot. It's shocking the amount of crossover and the amount that they get wrong. So since that segment is always good fun, let's guess what this guy did. So here's the mugshot. Now no sneaking ahead in the video. I see you. I see you with that mouse cursor. You put that down right now. So you gotta take a guess based on the clues. One, his face. Two, the fact that I would estimate roughly five to 15 years in prison he's looking for. And third, and this is the real kicker, there were no human victims of his crime. Well, like directly. So that rules out a lot. That really adds to the mystery. So enter your guess down below in the comment section. Unless you already know who this is, then don't. All right, you got five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, those were like your movie sucks countdown to spoiler seconds. Because I knew I was going to add this joke afterwards. All right, the man we're looking at, and this is a public mugshot in part of public records, FYI, to anyone who would be dumb enough to make a privacy complaint on YouTube. His name is Brett Salisbury, just like the steak. Although, unlike the delicious beef product, though it depends who's cooking and how, he stands accused of attempting to rob and then burn down two different gaming stores, one of which he succeeded in completely destroying and burning down. But luckily for society as a whole, especially the MTG community, they caught him because he's not very good at covering his tracks, apparently. Just good old-fashioned police work and interviewing people on the streets and asking around, gathering evidence. That's how they found out who was behind this, and... It looks like it was almost definitely him. I have to refer to him as a suspect right now. You never know until the court case goes through. But I'm not a judge, nor am I a lawyer, and welcome to the court of public opinion. He's creepy as hell looking. He's guilty. Done. Don't know him. Don't care. Don't have a beard like that. Yeah, I know. It's shockingly similar to my beard, except, like, double the length. I fully intend to shave it tomorrow, because it was, like, 72 today. So the two stores affected were in Georgia, um, around Hinesville. One of the stores was named Gamers Only. Uh, that was the one where he attempted to burn it down, but the fire burned itself out, luckily. But he did steal a bunch of cards. MTG cards, of course. Uh, I don't know if he stole any other games cards. Um, with Yu-Gi-Oh's reprint policy, who would even bother? They've devalued everything. Although, I mean, come on, does he not look like a Yu-Gi-Oh player? Unfortunately, the second store was not so lucky. It was called Jungle Jake's Hobbies and Games. And uh, the initial, I guess, police report and some investigation by the reporters, by the way, links to all the news articles, wonderful coverage uh, in the description below. But the narrative right now is that he broke in and then he wanted to steal a bunch of cards and then cover the theft with a fire. So people are just like, oh, there's nothing but ashes. Oh, these cards must have been destroyed. You know, who knows? Might be arson, might, you know, whatever, but the cards aren't missing. So then, uh, I hate to say this, but if you report like, a really expensive set of cards, a very unique cards, graded cards, a whole collection that went missing because of just a theft. If you report it, all the major sellers, and I mean all of them, are going to communicate or get contacted by the store, like the victim of the theft, and say, hey, if something even resembling this comes in, let us know who it is. And, and don't buy it or do, depending upon how you want to sting them. So yeah, word gets out and there's not that many like 9.5 graded individual alpha cards that are all sitting together, you know, come on. That comes on the market, somebody's going to hear about it. So if you just think, oh my gosh, they were lost in a fire, let's find somebody with a recent cell phone picture or an inventory proof or both, the insurance company's going to reimburse us for the lost inventory, let's get on with our lives, never suspecting that the cards were stolen, that would unfortunately make the cards easier to sell because nobody would be notified that they were stolen because you think they burned. So that sucks. Criminal genius mastermind, right? Uh, no, I don't know what exactly led to him getting captured, but apparently it wasn't that hard. I mean, they didn't like describe it as some miracle or he turned himself in or, oh my gosh, a break in the case or, you know, the cops are just like, yeah, we investigated and we asked people and then it led to him and I don't know, he probably admitted it. 
Or they found proof where they found the initial uh, stolen property, which would be nice. In fact, details were a little bit scarce, but I suspect with uh, the surprise arrest that happened pretty quickly afterwards, he probably didn't have time to sell the property. I'm waiting for a follow-up uh, news article or some additional details. So that'd be nice if they just straight up caught him with it, because that's in and out of court. And then when the court case is over with, hopefully within a reasonable amount of time, they can hand the expensive cards back to the owners. So this douchebag was arrested on April 19th. Uh, the fire at Jungle Jake's Hobbies was uh, March 27th. And uh, the one at Gamers Only was April 13th. And that's the one where the fire just kind of burned itself out and the whole building didn't go with it. By the way, if you want to know what a desperate, evil psychopath this douchebag was, the second store was in a local shopping center, so it could have caught other businesses on fire. So I'm going to go ahead and extrapolate how this guy was caught because uh, as the news article puts it on CoastalCourier.com, uh, the investigators talked to members of the gaming community who he said know each other and play various games at both locations until they were able to single out Salisbury as a person of interest. I bet they just walked up to it like, hey, hey, you know who started that fire? And they're like, it's that creepy motherfucker. You know, you keep seeing those news reports where they're like, oh, we used to have 4th of July together and cookouts and it was, he seemed like the most normal person ever. I didn't know that he was kidnapping dogs and grinding them up and selling them as food. Why, he seemed like the most well-adjusted person. I'm shocked. I mean, that's always the story, right? I want to see a news report just once where the person's like, not surprised. That's one creepy looking dude. He's got a creepy house, creepy car. He's creepy as hell. I don't talk to him. I actually considered moving. I mean, somebody's dog goes missing, hell, somebody's kid goes missing his neighborhood. All the fingers pointing to that house. That guy's weird as hell. I feel like this could have been that situation. In fact, think of your local gaming store. If it suddenly burned to the ground or somebody attempted to, then there was a giant theft and you're like, you talk to the investigators, they're saying, who do you think was it? Is there somebody who stands out as just that bad crazy enough to try something like that? I mean, is there that one dude, or if you're like the stores I played at, those three dudes where you're like, you know what, based on literally nothing, it's probably them. I have a feeling enough people were like, it's probably that weird guy with the beard that they got a warrant based on just that and then found him with the stolen property in his house. That's my theory. So when this asshole gets to jail, I think we all know, you know he's going to be like talking to his cellmate. It's like, what did you do? I killed a man with a screwdriver. And then he'll be like, oh, I'm in here because I tried to steal like, you know, 10K worth of uh, Magic the Gathering cards, maybe even some Pokemon cards. Oh, then I failed to properly burn down the store because I'm an incompetent idiot. And then all my uh, fellow community members pointed the fingers at me within about five seconds. Oh, Pokemon cards, you say. And you got 10 years for it, did you? That'll go well. I heard they don't respect glorious beards in prison, okay? They'll just assume you're like a Muslim or something. They don't assume, oh, there's a manly man. No. So although this is a crappy situation, I mean, like I said, I highly suspect with how this went down, the owners are at least getting their most valuable property back. It would have been insurance money. Anyway, yeah, deductibles suck and being out of business until they rebuild it or you move sucks. I mean, financials, backups, accounting, receipts, consignment items, a place to play. Oh, this is bad. But at the end of the day, at least the dude was caught. So it's not just a mystery of who this LGS serial arsonist is. I hope he goes to prison for a long, long time. I know that repeat offenses do not go over well in court. And crimes are bad, but crimes with attempted cover-ups even worse. I hope he's stupid enough to not plead guilty so that they absolutely throw the book at him instead of giving him some ridiculous plea deal. And lastly, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to look this guy up, uh, Georgia doesn't run like Wisconsin does with their uh, court system where you can just look absolutely anybody up completely for free. Get your crap together, Georgia. And I ain't paying 15 bucks for a background check. This video ain't even gonna make 15 bucks. So anyway, uh, bad news and good news, I guess, with this one. Let me know any further updates, further information. Did you play at this, uh, uh, either one of these stores? Did you know the guy? Any further information, I'm sure, will be down in the comments section. Remember, I read all comments. In fact, all comments are set to approve first, which is why you don't see them. But uh, anything that appears to be uh, verifiable information, I will pin. So check for that very shortly. My condolences to anybody who played at either of these places. And uh, I'll try to pay attention to this if there's any follow-ups or uh, anybody sees any kind of news follow-ups or the uh, results of the, I assume at this point, arraignment. Actually, no, I think they're past that. I don't know. I'm, I'm no legal expert. Basically, the court case. Um, I'll try to make a follow-up video, which uh, that'll be good for some closure, I guess. 
And hey, if you're the owner of either of these places, I would love to do a short interview with you over Skype or something. So uh, just leave a comment down below with your contact info. Nobody else will see it because all comments are held until I approve them. So I'll just copy and paste it and the public won't be able to get in touch with you. Nice little system. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to ask you about this guy because clearly he played at both your places. Uh, what your thoughts are on him and just what he's like. We're all curious. And I'm sure we want to know if you got your stuff back too. And of course, anything we can do to help. So uh, please do contact me or uh, pass my info along to uh, uh, either of these two people because I'm sure they don't watch my channel. And uh, hopefully we can uh, explore the situation. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.